In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove thermal paste on a CPU or more specifically how I like to remove thermal paste on my CPU. I'm also going to show you guys a few tips and tricks to have in mind when applying new thermal on your graphics card, on your CPU, on your console, whatever the device might be, we're going to look at it in this video coming up. Two tips before we get started. First one, make sure you have more compound at your disposal before you ever thinking about taking off the heatsink or the water block. I've done this mistake myself. You don't want to be using the same thermal twice as these tend to dry up and degrade over time. Also, a lot of times you can get air and bubbles in between the sink and the IHS or the CPU if you play around with the compound too much so this is something that i don't recommend you do it that being said if you happen to make a small mistake for example you realize you installed the heatsink the wrong way after you installed it turning it without applying new paste is from my experience not the end of the world however if you want to make sure you're getting the maximum performance you want to make sure you're not getting any air or bubbles in between so simply wipe it off and do it again is what i like to recommend in this video i'm using a ryzen 1700 and what i'm about to do is to switch over the 1700 for the 3900 x with that said let's move over to tip number two and so tip number two you want to have paper towels as well as a few cotton swabs and cotton swabs are great for getting rid of lumps and and cleanups around these narrow corners which otherwise can be tricky to reach with just paper towels and yeah lastly finally you want to have something called isopropanol and this is made of over 99% alcohol it cleans up the small traces of compound and evaporates in just a few seconds it's 100% safe to use for these purposes and this is what the stores that are selling these will recommend for you so first up you want to disconnect the CPU cooler of course in my case I need to take off these fans as well in order to get a hold of the heat sink next step is to obviously disassemble the cpu cooler now the cool thing about this RT cooler is that you don't actually need any tools which is kind of nice you can tie this even further if you want to but it's not necessary so if you're sitting on amd ryzen for example i highly recommend you try and slide off the cooler rather than you know simply just lift it up there is a possibility that the cpu will sort of stick onto the cooler and uh, snap out of the socket if it happens you don't have to freak out guys but obviously you want to try and avoid that so if you can try and twist and, and at the same time lift it there we go actually pretty happy with that okay so next step what you want to do now you see obviously you want to clean off the cooler clean off as much as i can this is the way i like to do it now i'm not sure guys if the camera is able to pick it up but there's still you know some thermal paste left here we're gonna deal with that in just a second there's a lot of thermal paste i usually start off with the uh, cotton swabs just like that to get rid of uh, if there's any limbs lumps <laughs> i'm trying to get most out of there as i can and then i proceed over to towels to get the rest i usually like to keep the cpu in its socket just for safety so at this point it's quite clean there is however still some level of thermal left on it so what i like to do now is applying a bit of isopropanol and while this is not necessary i highly recommend using it to get all traces of thermal paste off what i'm basically doing is that i'm putting the uh, cotton swab at the opening and sort of drip feeding on the cotton swab and then i just simply and at this point you can unmount the cpu from its socket it should be quite clean by now and that's basically how you do it now in our case we're going to switch this out now for the sake of this video i'm going to show you guys how you can apply some new thermals as well don't want to be using too much oh sorry this is the way you want to go now i've been doing this a few times by now and trust me guys at first i was using way too much thermal and this is a common mistake because you actually don't need that that much thermal let me just show you so that might not seem like it's a lot but actually it's pretty much all that you need apply some force on it now, as you can see in this example i probably could have used a tiny bit more thermal here but hopefully you get the idea bottom line is you don't want to be using too much thermal and you're gonna be fine here guys i promise now if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below and if you're thinking about picking up a new cpu for gaming and you're wondering what ryzen might be best for gaming i made a 
a separate video basically benchmarking the new Sun to processors i'll link that video up down below it's a very interesting video that shows you uh, what these processors are capable of in terms of gaming performance also let's talk about the thermal compound now in this video i'm using the arctic mx4 and this is what i like to recommend i've been using this for the past few years and you can read more about it down below i also made a video where i covered the best air coolers best budget air coolers i should say you find that video down below as well i also made a video where i tried the ryzen 5 3600 on a much older b350 motherboard if you're interested to see how that played out you can find a video down below as well now, if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below i'm going to be back with a brand new video in just a few days time thank you so much for watching this video until then you have an awesome day all right guys